but you hear their bark, maybe fear their bite. But police canines are much more than just that. The bond each dog has with their handler is a story in and of its own. Part of Illinois' Janice Rebels met with three police officers and their canines to hear the stories of their dynamic relationships in this special report, Companions in Courage. They are dogs with a hefty price tag, that of over $10,000. They require rigorous training, special equipment, and a dedicated partner. Police canines are no furry force to be messed with. They're bred to protect. For both Deputy J.R. Kester with Peoria County Sheriff's Office and Sergeant Wes Mattarelli with Illinois State Police, being a canine handler was a major career goal. Started following them around when I was brand new and watching the training, and as soon as I was eligible, I applied and got Quincy. It's something I've always wanted to do. I never really thought I would have the opportunity. Their canines are trained for narcotic detection, Plus. tracking, apprehension, and protection. Lib. But the journey for these dogs begin in Europe. German Shepherd puppies begin training almost right away, most for over a year, weeding out the distracted ones. Common breeding places include Germany, the Czech Republic, and the Netherlands. A lot of work, but it's a lot of fun. Back here at home, soon-to-be handlers anxiously await their next partner and future best friend. Officer Watson McKee with the Dwight Police Department remembers that feeling vividly. It's, it's extremely intimidating. Um, and I was afraid that I was going to get bit, but that's just part of it. For some, it was an easy decision to become a canine handler. I didn't have any kids. I wasn't married. Um, it was a very easy decision for me. For others, they never thought they would have a four-legged partner. I had no desire to be a canine handler from personal experience in the military. I didn't want to do it. Officer McKee was asked several times to take on the role, initially turning it down. But he knew someone needed to be a leader for Dwight Police and decided to do it. It's not something that I would do for a promotion. Uh, you have to have the right intentions. All three officers that I spoke with agreed that they were the ones with the learning curve when they were united with their new partner, saying that the canines were ready for work. He came to me trained. I was the one that needed the training, and, and I had to learn, you know, him and, and his personality and, and the way he liked to do things. With daily drills and mandatory training sessions monthly, the training never stops. But like everyone in law enforcement, canine officers clock out of work too. Each dog I met with had a different temperament and different relationship with their handler. He gets plenty of cuddling in the car. He sticks his head through and lays his head on me and he gets treats too, just like every dog does. Just when we're at home, he's just not quite in the house all the time. He's just too rambunctious. Deputy Kester has two children at home, so he built a heated kennel outside just for Quincy. Quincy's always supervised around Kester's daughters, Ella and Josie. The same rule goes for Sergeant Mattarelli. K-9 Dax has his own space to roam. There's definitely a delicate balance between having uh, a full-service police dog and having kids. With the kids always being home and the dog being home, they want it to be a pet. Um, at the end of the day, it, it's not a pet. It's actually a tool that I received from the department. It's a tool just like anything on my belt. But the relationship is different for Officer McKee and Cacho, as Cacho is less aggressive as a strictly narcotics dog. The two work together, take small trips, they even sleep right next to each other. He likes strawberry ice cream and steak. Because they are so close around the clock, it's clear when something isn't right. In December of 2017, something wasn't right, and Cacho was taken to the vet. Oh, this part's going to be harder to talk about. He was diagnosed with an inoperable tumor on December 6th. I met with the oncologist and they gave him till the day after Christmas. And it was devastating. And not just for him, the department and the community were also torn up over the diagnosis. Today, Cacho is in retirement after seven years of service. While people reflect on his successful career, he spends his final days walking alongside his lifelong partner and enjoying any belly rub he can get. From October of 2014 to October of 2015, we got 70 drug arrests in that 10-month period. And that's, that's probably his greatest accomplishment. Officer McKee and Cacho are taking it day by day now, as Cacho has already lived two months longer than expected. His legacy doesn't end either, as McKee has chosen to accept another canine in Cacho's honor. It's really important to me to have another dog and to keep the canine program going uh, as a legacy for Cacho. And they're doing just that. The community is raising money in hopes to have another canine officer in a matter of months. For Heart of Illinois, ABC, I'm Janice Rebholtz.
And Janice has kept in contact with Dwight since meeting with them, and Cacho is still doing well. The event to raise funds for the next canine is this Saturday and is already completely sold out.